We're on our way to Stewart, British Columbia. Stewart is famous for the, having been a huge copper mine called Grand Duke, which closed quite a few decades ago. But this is the Bear Glacier. And 40 odd years ago, when I used to come here as the Member of Parliament, this glacier came right up against the road. So in 40 years, it's retreated this far as evidence, I think, of climate change. And uh, you can see the rough parts of it. I don't think I've seen any wildlife on it in all my years going back and forth on this road, but I consider it a very beautiful glacier. And I'm glad some of them at least are still there for everyone to see. I guess it won't be there 50 years from now, but maybe people will remember it. Stewart is important because it was an important part of uh, the constituency I represented in my days as a member of parliament. And this was the home of the Grand Duke mine, a big copper mine uh, that went uh, more than 16 kilometers into the ground with a Mitsubishi train taking the workers in. We will see a memorial over there to a number who lost their lives during uh, an avalanche at the mine and uh, 26 of them were lost in 1965. It was a great tragedy, and I'm, I have uh, on occasion been here for memorials held there. The history goes back to 1898, when the first mineral deposits were exploited here, same time as the Klondike Gold Rush. And uh, there are people who have been at both uh, in the history of Stewart. The famous Klondike Kate lived here in her latter years, for instance. And uh, people say there is still gold to be found in the creeks and rivers and fast flowing little waterways here. I haven't experimented to find any, but I think uh, that's probably true. There's gold in most uh, British Columbia creeks if you want to look hard enough. So Stewart is famous for copper, and you will also find large deposits of jade. And they say, uh, well, we're not very far from Kitsalt, which was molybdenum and Kitsalt's going to be reopened again in this era, uh, looking toward liquefied natural gas, I believe. Uh, that town's been mothballed for about 35, 40 years, and it's coming back to life. So I think the future will be in this area as climate change takes its toll. You can see the glaciers, they're much higher up than they were, as I remember. So that's another indication of change. It's not necessarily colder or hotter, it's ultimate change. But I think uh, the, uh, the wildlife that we see, the birds, Northern California birds are here now, um, indicate that I guess the human population will move into these regions at one time. And they'll have to learn to live with the mountains and whatever happens here in the way of weather. The climate is quite variable here.